Hello, I'm Andy Rash, the technical trainer for DMAG Cranes and Components. Today we're going to focus in on the DC control boards. I have two of the common two-speed control boards in front of me in 460 volt. They're commonly known as part number 773-160-33. It's pretty much a contained board with an arm extension that has an LED readout for error codes an infrared output module for communicating with Adapsi laptops, and above it, a pulse reader that we showed in our first video that reads the shaft rotation. We have two boards here. One is manufactured earlier than the other. Notice that the relays that control the brake, the direction, and the speed have changed orientation and manufacture. This arm goes into a slot on the black carrier on the back of the board housing. It slides in the slot and allows a little bit of flexibility when remounting a control board to slip it in under the brake assembly. The arm is plugged into the main board with a red connector. We talked about this in our overall features video. Be very cautious of that little red tab when you disassemble and replug. Better to not ever touch it, but if you have to, make sure you orient that tab in the proper direction and plug it together. In 2010, comms were also painted blue to match the Pro. Early comms that had a silver outer finish have a different motor than the ones that are painted blue. This jumper defines to the board what motor is being used on the hoist. Older motors were dual wound 8-pole, 4-pole for comms and pros were 8-pole, 2-pole. After 2010, the comms painted blue received the same motor as the pro. So it's an 8-2 motor. The 8-2 motor needs to have this jumper located on pins 1 and 2 of this 5-pin plug. If you have a COM that's silver that predates 2010, you'll want to move this jumper down to pins 2 and 3. If you forget to do it and you start up the old hoist, it'll produce an error code to tell you to look at the position of that jumper if you use the troubleshooting chart. The seven segment LED here will produce symbols. It'll produce the symbol 8 when e-stop is engaged. It'll produce the center of the figure 8 only when it's ready to run right after e-stop is disengaged and power is allowed to flow to the motor. The hoist will display its software version running on the board. It looks like the letter U, but it's really meaning a V. It's what the seven segment display can produce, followed by a three digit number. Very typical is 183, meaning 1.83 software running on the board. After the hoist sits idle for a while, the display will change to an H and then a number with the number of operating hours alternating with the letter C which is contactor cycles times 100,000 for predictive maintenance change of the K1 contactor. In high cycling hoist if you're tracking your cycles you can change K1. So the first part of troubleshooting is to look at this LED display for a lightning bolt symbol that looks a bit like a squiggle through the display or the letter E for error code and either the fault or error code should be notated and compared to a list for what you can do about it from a troubleshooting standpoint. Several of these error codes lead to simply cleaning the photo eyes. The two rectangular black pieces sticking upward are the pulse reader eyes. 
In the later part of this video, we will show you how to clean it on a typical hoist using some camera cleaning tools. The best orientation is to have the pulse wheel centered between the photo eyes and make sure they're clean. Mounting screws go on the board here and here and then on the back here and here are the Phillips screws. The back of the board has the green plug-in for three-phase power and ground, the twist lock for the pendant, the plug-in for the limit switch for lifting and lowering, and below it a socket for quick connect of a e-trolley, or if the trolley isn't being used, a dummy plug. -in. This would be a typical limit switch for lifting and lowering. They're micro switches that get actuated by blocks on the chain, either the bottom block or the anchor block at the end of the chain. This end feeds back up and plugs in so that the plug, being small, flat, and rectangular, fits in the upper socket on this square plug-in point, and then the square grommet covers it and protects it. This is the trolley dummy plug. It needs to be in place when there's no trolley being plugged in with the hoist. It takes the place of the full trolley. The hoist will not function in a solo mode without this dummy plug being put in. Let me pull it out. The trolley dummy plug is an RJ connector with a single wire jumper added to the center two terminals. Do not lose this. If you ever want to test a hoist as a solo hoist and remove a trolley from the hoist and run the hoist singularly, you'll need to have this in place to take the place of the actual trolley. The power feed for the three phase and the ground will have a clamp as part of a plastic assembly for strain relief leading to it. In our first video for the overall view, we showed it clamping round cable. It has a side for clamping round and a side for clamping flat cable. It needs to be turned over and mounted dependent on the cable type you use. The clamp is just ahead of where the plug-in point is in the casting of the hoist. The plug is attached by a plastic strap to a part that's a couple inches away from where the plug-in point is to provide the strain relief or the power cable. The power plug is green, or three-phase power and ground, attach and feed the hoist. On an operating hoist, this will be covered by a grommet. Please make sure that you seat your incoming power cables into the holes properly and tighten the terminal screws. Many times we get phone calls that are simply related to a board not lighting up, and it's traced back to a loose wire on the three-phase power or a missing leg somewhere in the feed system. Here's a green plug that suffered a power surge and has obvious signs of burning on the L1 leg of the plug. For quick cleaning and checking, we recommend using lens cleaning equipment for a camera such as the puffer and the light brush. We can also use a lens cleaning towelette and in this case a wood skewer to also clean the area. It is removable also for easier access. The newest style looks more like this one. The K1 main contactor on the newest boards is removable and replaceable as a part. We recommend replacing this on high cycling hoist. Simply undo the plastic clip and wiggle it off its connection. We've shown you the key features of the control board. Please remember, if the LED does not light up, you have a burned out control board. As long as power is supplied and no light in the LED, you'll have to replace the board. 
There are other reasons and error codes and fault codes that you can find on the chart. It's an attachment to the video that will also identify when you need to change the board. Remember the part number of the common board is for the Pro and the COM2 speed, 460 volts, 773-160-33. But do make sure that that's a 2 speed, DC 1 through 15. The DCS has a different part number. Troubleshooting many times can be done with substitution. If you have more than one hoist that's comparable, meaning two speed DC models 1 through 15, they will be utilizing the same control board. One of the best troubleshooting techniques is to do substitution between boards. This is accomplished quickly and readily. It can also be used for betting out problems with pendants and pendant cables. We thank you for watching our control board video.